The day that Tropical Cyclone Kiralee, a Category 2 strength system, makes landfall on central Queensland north of Townsville, we're expecting a strong cyclone to come ashore. The latest forecast update for January 25th uh, brought to you by Force 13 Australia and Oceania. If you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing and leave a like on the video while you're at it if you do end up enjoying this video. Um, we've got a tropical cyclone just sitting offshore from Queensland, as I'm sure most of you are aware of at this point. It's moving ashore as we speak. It's blown up a substantially in increasing amount of convection, actually, more than what we initially thought. So it is slightly stronger than what we did think. It's now a Category 2 strength cyclone, as I have said, as supported by wind observation on Flinders Reef, where sustained winds of 85 kilometers an hour are currently being reported. But before we get into the cyclone coverage, let's just take a look at what's happening across our beautiful nation. So we've got very hot conditions across our centre, of course, with the Australian summer. Still, however, 49 degrees Celsius for Birdsville today. That is blisteringly hot. Uh, make sure you're staying cool if you are in the centre of Australia, which I don't imagine many of you are. Uh, there's storms across the nation's north and also storms across parts of Western Australia with the passage of the remnants of Tropical Low 03U. Got a little bit of light rain across parts of South Australia and Victoria, which is slightly unseasonal, but that is again associated with the remnants of 3U, bringing up a little bit of moisture from the bite. Showers for the northern parts of Hobart and cyclonic conditions extending between Mackay, Cairns and inland communities such as Charters Towers, and that includes Townsville and Bowen as tropical cyclone Kiralee makes landfall. And you can see that now on the forecast graphic. We've got no areas of interest, however, I do um, I did consider marking a little spot around the Solomon Islands. There's been a little bit of model support about our next tropical cyclone uh, forming somewhere near the Solomon Islands. And also, as I'll get, get to later on in the video, the Access G3 has a little bit of support for a tropical cyclone developing across the waters of Western Australia. So there is rumbles of activity in around 10 to 14 days time, but it is too far out to make a definitive call at this point. So as I have said, a category two strength system with sustained winds of 85 kilometers an hour, gusting to 130 kilometers an hour for cyclone Q and those cyclone winds are starting to come ashore. Now, the reason that I'm running with Category 2 status at this point and the Bureau of Meteorology is still going with Category 1 status, so the Category 2 call is not official yet at the production of this video, um, is because of wind observations on Flinders Reef, which are currently at 86 kilometers an hour from the south. So that's why I've bumped it up to Category 2 strength status. Now, that cyclone warning from Innisfail to Serena, including Townsville and Mackay and inland at two Charters Towers and Ravenswood. As we take a look at the Access G3 winds, the reason that this is and in the pretty format that we're used to seeing on this channel is because my software is just crashing left, right and centre on me today. But you can see it moves into central Australia as a remnant low sort of system, bounces around for a couple of days and then the future beyond sort of uh, Monday and Tuesday next week becomes very uncertain. But you can see the remnants of the system makes it all the way into Western Australia and re-emerges out um, around Broome and that's that little system that I uh, talked about at the start of the video being that next chance of development and you can also see a slight spin up across the Cape York Peninsula and the Solomon Islands later on in that run. Now for a look at the Access G3 rainfall nationwide this is from the East Central BF model actually you can see a substantial amount of rainfall is expected from the passage of Kiralee. There's actually um, a lot of rainfall uh, expected over parts of central Queensland. We could be seeing totals of approach 500 millimeters in one or two locations and then it gets really stormy towards next weekend and the start of next week for a lot of Queensland as this trough sort of extends across the state. So expect some pretty unsettled weather across parts of northern New South Wales extending all through coastal Queensland. And you can also see the Eastern Reef is supporting um, Kiralee's remnants marching across the entire country and re-emerging off the coast of Western Australia about where the Access G3 model had it at. So this is going to be a scenario that we're going to have to watch. I'm not going to make any calls on it right now, but there is increasing probability that it's going to re-emerge off the shore from Western Australia and maybe do a little dance as a cyclone there. Now for a quick look at temperature across the nation, it's just hot conditions across the uh, country centre. Well, I mean, average conditions to be fair, 40 degrees is by no means hot uh, for the Australia's red centre. Um, but still, though, there could be some one or two places across our metro, major metro areas around Perth that uh, tickle 40 degrees Celsius by early next week. We could also be seeing some relatively warm days across parts of southeastern Queensland. Especially with this unsettled weather, there'll be a lot of humidity, so the heat indexes will be sky high by the start of next week. But it's also kind of like what's new at this time of the year because uh, they're no stranger to 42 degrees Celsius days on the heat index with humid conditions and then thunderstorms in the afternoon over there. 
Now for a brief look at Cyclone Kirli, it's got that exposed low level center of circulation, which is why it's not strengthening faster, but still looking much, much, much better from where it was a couple of days ago. It's actually looking very similar to Cyclone Jasper, how he made landfall uh, just to the north of Cairns around Port Douglas and the Daintree. So it's quite a similar situation in terms of storm structure, actually. Uh, those inflow bands really have refused to materialize, which means it's gonna be a sunny day from Mackay, as opposed to the torrential rainfall that we were expecting a couple of days ago. And speaking of tropical cyclone Kirli, let's zoom right into her. We're taking a look at the radar imagery right now. In fact, I'm just going to load up the six hour loop and let's see how this cyclone has progressed. Now, this is Flinders Reef right here. The winds are starting to back off. They're now 70 kilometers an hour from the southwest. And that's because this little hole in the storm here, which is called the storm's eye, um, that's now starting to move over the island, which means the conditions are really starting to calm off there. You can see very heavy rainfall towards the northern side of the system that's kind of currently just towards the south of Willis Island, and that's going to be drenching communities between Townsville and Cardwell. So this intense rainfall has sort of flipped from being a problem down around Mackay and Bowen Ways, right up towards Townsville and Cardwell Ways, and that's where we're expecting the significant heavy falls to occur uh, now. But you can see down towards Hamilton Island, there's going to be some very heavy rainfall, uh, very gusty winds rather there today, already um, in 72 kilometer an hour winds, gusting to about 100 kilometers an hour. So they're in full-blown cyclone conditions down on Hamilton Island. And that's a good three to 400 kilometers away from the storm's center. So it's a very large storm in terms of total size. Um, you can see it's um, huge, actually. These swirly clouds are extending right down towards Mackay, which is basically where the cyclonic uh, winds end at. Um, it looks like Creel Reef is just outside of the cyclone wind zones, but all along the Queensland coastline up to around Cardwell um, is uh, receiving cyclonic wind gusts at this point and is at risk of receiving cyclonic winds. And I do feel that it is the right call from the uh, Bureau of Meteorology to be calling cyclone warnings right up towards Innisfail. I would not be shocked if Innisfail got cyclone winds at this point. And maybe even inland towards Ravenshoe because this storm is a little bit further north than what we were initially thinking. The center of circulation is right here where the cursor is. I'll get that right into frame actually. By about this point, we're expecting the storm center to be about here. So it's wobbled an extra 50 to 100 kilometers further north, which means of course, all of the worst conditions are being brought about 50 to 100 kilometers further north. And because of the storm structure where it's blowing up these really intense thunderstorms towards uh, the northern side of the storm center, that's because of a thing called wind shear, which is uh, changes and in wind speeds and direction in the upper atmosphere, pushing the thunderstorm clouds or blowing these thunderstorm clouds towards the northern side of the storm. As you can see in this infrared satellite look, which it gives us an idea of how intense the thunderstorms are. Because of this wind shear, the worst conditions have actually been blown further towards the north of the storm center. So normally wind shear isn't good for intensifying the storm, but it can have drastic um, ramifications on what places pick up the worst conditions. And it looks like it's uh, really changed the game here in the sense that the southern side of the storm is just really going to get a light breeze and a couple of rain showers from this tropical cyclone but the northern side of the storm is going to get absolutely blasted and even down towards Hamilton Island where they're basically getting a sunny day at this point I mean they've just got a couple of low clouds streaming into them um, and, and these are probably just light shower clouds they're still under full-blown cyclone conditions so that's a fairly interesting thing here and I'd be interested to see if the storm does fire up any thunderstorms down towards the south so in short anywhere further north north of the expected landfall site, which at this point is between Townsville and Eyre, is going to receive the worst conditions from this tropical cyclone, and that includes places such as Ingham, Cardwell, Tully, and up towards Innisfail. Um, Oh yeah, and Townsville included. Um, so we'll take a look at the uh, forecast right now. Forecast in this sense really doesn't matter too much because we're getting so close to landfall at this point. The red areas highlight the cyclonic wind speed. So that's where you're seeing your winds in excess of 65 kilometers an hour, gusting in excess of 90 kilometers an hour. 85 kilometers an hour is the threshold for category two status. And that's sort of what we've got in the cyclone right now. Uh, winds of around 90 to 95 kilometers an hour, I would say maximum sustained. But the reason I haven't called for this system being stronger when I've got reasoning that suggests that this storm is stronger than 85 kilometers an hour is just because of the lack of wind observations in the area. Um, the storm's been very, very uncertain and very difficult to track. So I'm going to be very conservative on uh, this forecast from now on. But taking a look throughout, uh, throughout the rest of today, 
uh, these times down the bottom in Australian Western Standard Time. So add two hours for the local time. It looks like it's approaching landfall at around 8 or 9 p.m. local time with maximum sustained winds of around 100 kilometers an hour and peak wind gusts will probably be around that 140 kilometer an hour mark. Yeah. About 140 to 150 kilometers an hour, Palm Island getting belted with 140 kilometer an hour wind gusts. Uh, you'd want to be all prepared by mid morning today, latest. I mean, if when this video comes out and you're watching it, you should be 110% prepared for this tropical cyclone. I'm glad I told people to prepare for a category three strength severe tropical cyclone because. Um, this will be a strong category two strength tropical cyclone as it makes landfall. And the difference that five or 10 kilometer an hour wind speeds makes is hardly anything. So being prepared for a category three strength severe tropical cyclone was a very good call in this sense because it will be approaching that intensity as it makes landfall on Townsville. But it looks like it makes a landfall just to the north of Townsville. Um, that's actually bad news in the sense that the destructive northerly winds on the back side of the system, on the northern side of the system, are going to be blasting into Townsville from later tonight and into early tomorrow morning at around 10 to, uh, p.m. tonight and into 2 a.m. tomorrow. That's going to be the uh, time for the worst conditions, and you can already see Townsville will be experiencing wind gusts in excess of 100 kilometers an hour, or maybe even 110 or 115 kilometers an hour for quite a substantial period of time until at least 2 or 3 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. Um, so yeah, a lot of winds are expected to blow through the Townsville area. It's going to be a very rough ride, that's for sure. Air seems to be spent of the worst case scenario that we were looking at a couple of days ago, but still the Air Town site received peak, receives peak wind gusts of around 130 to 140 kilometers an hour. Townsville about 125 kilometers an hour. And these wind gusts, these are very destructive wind gusts and being sustained over a period of time for about four to five hours, which is what we're expecting. It's gonna deliver some pretty significant tree damage, some also pretty significant damage to power poles is expected. Um, it's gonna be a strong cyclone and it's not an impact to be taken lightly. So your preparations should be 100% done at this point. You should be uh, thinking about hunkering down, uh, maybe have a few movies saved from Netflix uh, to get through the cyclone, have those beers on ice. We're not looking at this devastating category three or category four strength impact that we were seeing a couple of days ago. So it's unlikely you're going to be cut off uh, from everywhere for days straight. It looks like I would say the airport might be open in Townsville from as early as Friday evenings. So you'll be seeing uh, flights and disaster relief being flown in there from early Friday evening or Saturday morning. Um, the Cairns airport should remain open. I think the Hamilton Island airport might actually be open tomorrow morning um, and airports around Ely Beach and Bond maybe about tomorrow by mid-afternoon. But Townsville probably about Friday evening, I would say, as this storm fully blows um, out of Townsville. Um, so yeah, very unlikely that you're going to be cut off for more than 24 hours. Uh, power might be a different story. You might be powerless for about 36 or 48 hours, but we're not looking at this devastating, life-threatening impact anymore, which is some very good news. And with their disaster management plans up in the far north Queensland, they, they can get uh, town, whole towns back online very, very quickly. Far, it'd be devastating if a cyclone hit, it, uh, hit a big population centre. I mean, if it hit Perth, oh, we'd be months before we got any form of power uh, back the way our electricity grid works. So I'm uh, very thankful for far north Queensland in the sense that they've got some great disaster relief plans in place up there and they can get whole towns back online in about 24 hours. So uh, that's some good news there and I really hope it is the case with Kirli because she's not an intense tropical cyclone. She is still a strong tropical cyclone and she's still a force to be reckoned with, I guess, but um, she's not looking like a devastating system, which is very good news indeed. Um, we will just take a look at the radar briefly once again. We're already starting to see these outer bands here approach the coast around Prosser Pine, Early Beach, Bowen, and Townsville. Now, these are the outer bands that have these really gusty showers in them, and that's why we're starting to see some really strong winds blowing ashore around Hamilton Island and so forth, and it's only going to be a couple of hours before these bands blow ashore around Air and Townsville. The Mackay radar is currently down, I believe, so uh, that's why I've been looking a couple of hours <laughs> behind, my bad. I think the Mackay radar is currently down, um, so that's why we haven't been seeing those um, uh, rainfall uh, or accurate radar imagery down there. Uh, but you can already see these gusty showers starting to blow short through Townsville. And I've just noticed 83 kilometers an hour on Hamilton Island. This is a category two strength tropical cyclone with category two strength winds extending as far south as Hamilton Island. So maybe this storm might actually have winds approaching 100 kilometers 
Wisconsin out on the southern side, considering how strong the winds are down there. This is going to be a very interesting picture to see evolve throughout today. Now, we'll take a look at rainfall just to briefly close off this video. As I've said time and time again, with all tropical cyclones, it's just going to be this torrential downpour across the landfall site for about six hours or so, where you're going to see places pick up up to about uh, three to 400 millimeters in one or two locations. Now, because the storm's firing so much thunderstorm activity towards its north, I'm actually expecting elevated rainfall totals between Townsville and Innisfail. We're in these hilly terrains up here, which are very, very tropical, some of the wettest places in Australia, I would not be surprised if one or two places pick up up to six or 700 millimeters now, considering how much thunderstorm convection has been blown up. But considering that this is very tropical and also quite remote, um, it's well out of Townsville and well out out of uh, Mackay, I'm not expecting a life-threatening flash flooding situation to develop over a widespread area. Still, however, if you live between Ingham and Innisfail, be on high alert for flooding tonight and into tomorrow morning because a lot of rainfall is coming your way. In fact, over the next 24 hours, there will be places that pick up over 300 millimeters, I'd say. I reckon the Access G3 model might be slightly underestimating here. Oh no, the Access is actually calling for four to 500 millimeters. And I think that's plausible considering the amount of thunderstorm activity that this cyclone is blowing up right now. Now over the next five days, which is fairly easy to predict from the access, so I would be inclined to support this forecast. You're looking at three to 400 millimeters for a lot of locations. I think the access has kind of missed the mark in terms of rainfall on the southern side of the system. Um, I, I, so I see Townsville picking up more than 50 millimeters. Uh, certainly the risk of flash flooding in Townsville remains tonight and into tomorrow morning. There's also going to be about 100 millimeters of those hills outside of Mackay. As I've said uh, before, there is still that risk of flash flooding there in terms of very heavy showers being blown ashore there. And we're already starting to see some of those very blustery and heavy showers being blown ashore between Mackay and up towards Bowen. And then inland looks like the real deal for rainfall. We could be seeing up to 400 millimetres for a lot of locations. But again, as you start getting towards day four and day five, the forecast becomes a lot more um, it's kind of muddier and difficult to uh, predict. And I don't foresee a chance of 600 millimetres falling in locations that only receive 400 millimetres in a year around Mount Isa. But still, areas around Mount Isa, like Mount Julia and Cloncurry, could pick up up to 200 millimetres from the passage of this tropical cyclone's remnants. And very briefly, I will talk about this chance that this system has, and I've used the word chance very, very loosely. You can see it re-emerges off the coast of WA as a tropical cyclone. We've seen storms take this track before where they landfall on Queensland and they somehow survive all across the nation and re-emerge here. But this would certainly be something extraordinary. Um, I mean, a cyclone lasting about 20 days as a traceable tropical low, that's some crazy stuff there. But we might not be done with Kiralee yet. So if you want further coverage on this system, make sure you are. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, also another tropical low forming in the Gulf of Carpentary here and I have highlighted the possibility for something forming over the Solomon Islands. You can see a monsoon trough starting to develop here. So yeah, it looks like we're well and truly in this busy period of four tropical cyclones. However, uh, the main story is of course Kiralee. If you live between Cardwell down to Bowen, it is imperative that you stay safe tonight and into tomorrow morning. This tropical cyclone is strong and it's still strengthening as well. Winds are category two proportions at least, um, and it is not a storm to be taken lightly or to be messing around with. So make sure you're staying safe. I wish you all the best to ride out this storm, and I thank you so much for watching my forecasts on this system. And if you want to see future forecasts on tropical cyclones, please do consider subscribing as well. But that's all from me, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye. Thank you for watching our content this update. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe to get more updates covering all things weather and geophysics impacting Australia and the Oceania region. Subscribe to our other channels for more content from across the network and be sure to check out our website where you can find free access to floater and radar imagery and articles on everything weather and much more. If you wish to support us directly, you can purchase some of our merchandise. We have a wide variety of clothing and homeware. Or you could become an ultimate fan, which is the best way to directly support us, granting you some sweet perks and offers, including features in our custom storm animations, live streams, and much more.